Yes, I have tricks in my pocket, I have things up my sleeve, but I am the opposite of a stage magician. He gives you illusion that has the appearance of truth, I give you truth in the pleasant guise of illusion. To start with, I will turn back time to that quaint little period, the 30s, where a huge middle class of America was matriculating in a school for the blind. Their eyes had failed them, or they had failed their eyes, and so had their fingers pressed forcibly down on the fiery braille alphabet of a dissolving economy. In Spain there was revolution. Here there was shouting and confusion. In Spain there was Guernica. Here there were disturbances of labor, sometimes pretty violent in otherwise peaceful cities, Chicago, Cleveland, St. Louis. This is the social background of the play. The play is memory. Being a memory play, it is dimly lighted, it is sentimental, it's not realistic. In memory, everything seems to happen to music, hence the violin and the wings. I am the narrator of the play, but also a character in it. The other characters are my mother Amanda, my sister Laura, and a gentleman caller who appears only in the final scenes. He is probably the most real character in the play, being somehow detached from the world that we belong to. He is that always expected, often overdue, something that we live for. There is one other character who appears in the play, but only in this larger than life-size photograph above the mantelpiece. This is our father who left us a long time ago. He was a telephone repairman who fell in love with long distances and so quit his job at the phone company and skipped the light fantastic out of town. The last we heard from him was a picture postcard from the Pacific Coast with two words, hello, goodbye, and no return address. I think the rest of the play will explain itself.